Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarita Cucumber and in today's video we're going to be going over more Life is Strange 2 predictions from the first episode, including choices and theorising about their future consequences such as Mushroom the Dog, Daniel's behaviour, some minor characters and the cast of Captain Spirit in relation to Sean and Daniel. This is part 2 of a two part series and I'll be referencing the first video at some points throughout this video, so if you haven't seen part 1 you can find a link to it in the description of this video and you should probably watch that before continuing on to this video. Obviously, due to the nature of these theories, there will be major plot spoilers ahead for Life is Strange 2 Episode 1 and the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit, along with some potential reference to other Life is Strange games. With all that said, let's dive straight into the video. Number 1. Captain Spirit in June of this year, Don't Not unexpectedly dropped an announcement for a game called The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit at E3, which was set to drop just a couple of weeks later. Captain Spirit set us in December of 2016 in a place called Beaver Creek, a while south of Arcadia Bay, and has us playing as Chris Erickson, a lonely 10-year-old boy with a large imagination. He lives with his abusive, alcoholic father, Charles, who is barely coping after the loss of his wife and Chris's mother, Emily Erickson. Towards the end of the episode, Chris's father has a fall, after which his neighbour, Claire Reynolds, who Chris mentions a few times throughout the episode, shows up to make sure everything's okay. She is a kindly old woman who is partially aware of Charles's nature. She expresses concern for Chris and for his situation, and depending on your dialogue choices, she will either walk away with the assurance that everything is okay, or will tell Chris that she will be overlated to talk to his father. Either way, Charles will become enraged, making Chris run from the house and attempt to climb into his treehouse. On the way up, one of the rungs of his makeshift ladder breaks and Chris plummets to the ground, only to be saved at the last minute by none other than our very own Daniel Diaz. Captain Spirit tells us a lot about Life is Strange 2's second episode, and I'll split it into two segments. First of all, I think Mrs. Reynolds is a lot more significant than she first seems, as it's actually heavily suggested that she is the grandmother of Daniel and Sean. The information that we have that sets this theory out is that if Chris successfully convinces Claire that everything is fine, she will bring up the fact that she has grandchildren who she hasn't seen in a long time who are currently staying with her and about how she has a grandson who is about Chris's age and that they would get on well. Oh, by the way, my grandchildren are finally home for Christmas. Oh my, it's been ages since I've seen those boys. You know, one of them is your age and I'll bet you two would get along just like brothers. In Life is Strange 2, while overlooking Arcadia Bay with Brody, Sean comments about how he doesn't have family in the US besides grandparents he hasn't seen in a long time. Maybe. We don't even have family in the US, except for grandparents we don't see anymore. I really don't think Don't Nod would throw these two details in unless they had significance. Why mention Sean's grandparents at all? Why would Claire talk about her grandson? Other than these two interactions, they would be completely irrelevant dialogue. Sean could have just said we don't have family in the US and Claire could have just left it at that. According to the rule of Chekhov's gun, the only reason for something being mentioned is because it's relevant to the story. A lot of writers follow this rule, and I'd imagine that the writers of Don't Nod are no different. These two separate voice interactions are linked, along with the fact that the teaser for episode 2 shows Sean and Daniel in a location that looks very similar to the setting of Captain Spirit. Therefore, I'm almost certain that Mrs. Reynolds is Sean's grandmother, and that we'll meet up with her in episode 2 to stay with her for a while. The other side of the story is that Sean and Daniel need a reason to stay on the move. A central theme of the game is movement and travel, and they can't break this theme in episode 2. The Diaz brothers must find a reason to keep moving, and I think this reason may lie with the Ericsons after Daniel saves Chris from falling from the treehouse. I don't have any solid evidence to back up these claims, and these are purely speculation rather than theory. Perhaps Charles will become enraged at Daniel and Sean and force them to flee. Maybe Daniel will accidentally hurt Chris, or hurt Charles. Maybe somebody will report Daniel's powers from afar and he will have to leave. Maybe Charles will see Daniel saving Chris and attack him since he thinks Daniel may be trying to hurt Chris. Supernatural powers are enough to freak anybody out. If you found a child making your son levitate, you'd probably be quite scared of him too. 
We know that the boys will have to partially explain the situation to Mr. and Mrs. Reynolds since they will likely have seen the news stories, but we're not quite sure how any of this is going to go down yet. Personally though, I'm hoping for and expecting a little bit of respite for Daniel, at least maybe some scenes where him and Chris can play as carefree children, something Daniel hasn't had the opportunity to do for months by that point. Chris is lonely and Daniel's been deprived of being an actual child. After hearing about his father's death, it could be a nice way for him to relieve himself since, after all, he's still only a nine-year-old boy. I think that in regard to Chris and Daniel, there may be an endearing passing the torch moment between Chris and Daniel, where Chris hands Daniel the title of Captain Spirit and idolises him as a superhero, teaching him how to save people's lives. Chris will surely come to know of Daniel's powers to this extent, so it would make perfect sense. An interesting bit of information is that Daniel and Sean are shown wearing thicker, warmer clothes in Captain Spirit. I'm not sure, but perhaps that this will show that stealing the tent from Hank Stamper in episode 1 will be somewhat pointless, since the boys might not even be using it by that point, or Daniel's raccoon sweater. Just something to think about. Number 2. Daniel's Powers if the teaser for episode 2 gave us anything to expect, it will likely be something similar to episode 2 of the original Life is Strange game, which had us training our rewind power by helping Chloe collect fucking bottles. Post-traumatic stress disorder aside, I imagine there'll be an abundance of training scenes in episode 2 since the teaser shows Daniel able to manage some control over his powers and Sean's encouraging voice can be heard pushing Daniel to lift the stone with his mind. I imagine that as Sean, we'll be tasked with instructing Daniel to use his power and teaching him control over it. We know that by the end of episode 2, Cap Daniel's power... We know that by the end of episode 2, Daniel's power will be strong enough and controlled enough to save a 10 year old boy falling from a tree and make him levitate in place, which is a big difference from the motel room where Daniel's making tiny objects whiz around in a tornado with zero control, but large objects like Mushroom for example stay rooted to the floor. Something to think about in regard to the training scenes and their nature may be that some actions in episode 1 may change about how Daniel learns his powers. Namely, teaching him how to skip stones and winning the power bear toy from the claw machine. If we taught him how to be persistent and determined in episode 1, Daniel is probably likely to display a more positive attitude and maintain this mindset in episode 2 while training with his powers, and it will probably make training him easier. I can see some of these scenes being a little frustrating to say the least, so I think it would be nice to be able to skip some of the angsty dialogue where Daniel can't quite manage to rotate objects in the air. Another brief thing about Daniel I'd like to mention is that I think his birthday may fall within the second episode. Daniel's birthday would actually serve as a very good guilt trip for the player, possibly forcing them to make a choice that's rash, uneconomical, and quite stupid, such as buying Daniel an expensive birthday present. The reason that I think his birthday might fall here is because of our interaction with the Californian family in episode 1 at the gas station when Sean says, this is my brother, he's 9. Daniel responds with, I'm almost 10, which leads us to believe that his birthday could be looming. Of course, this could just be the common childlike mannerism of always wanting to be a year older, and Daniel's birthday might actually be far in the future, but assuming that he's telling the truth, I think that Donod could definitely throw in a scene related to Daniel's 10th birthday. While there is minimal evidence to support this, it is entirely possible. Number 3. Mushroom it's obligatory for me to start this segment with a little message, just in case anybody from Don't Nod is watching this video. Now, you listen to me. If that adorable little ball of joy comes even remotely close to harm's way, I will hunt you down, come to your offices, and personally remove each one of your finger and toenails with an industrial file one by one. I am fully serious that if you hurt this poor dog, I will put you in ten times more pain than anything you've ever felt before. When Daniel unexpectedly picked up Mushroom at the gas station, it was somewhat of a moment of frustration for the player. Daniel, however, seems genuinely happy and elated with his new canine companion and is ecstatic when he gets to name her. There's even the cute scene in Brody's car where they fall asleep together. Aww. But as Sean and as the player, we obviously notice that it's more difficult to take care of a dog. Not to mention that the two are children and they're on the run, they can barely afford to take care of themselves and taking care of a dog doesn't seem like the smartest move in that situation. 
With all of that aside, I have two main predictions for what will happen with Mushroom. The first is, as sad as it makes me to say it, she could die. Mushroom is unseen during the events of Captain Spirit and it would be a big don't nod move to kill off a pure, innocent character we really care about in episode 2. If we're keeping with the constant theme of things going bad to worse, Mushroom's death could be an event that would sever happiness for the boys. Perhaps she doesn't make it through the winter before they get to Beaver Creek, or perhaps Daniel will accidentally kill her. He might ask if it's his fault, only for us to be faced with the choice of lying to Daniel after promising him we wouldn't at the end of episode 1. I think that the choice is a precursor that we will almost have to lie to Daniel in the future, and Mushroom dying may be a thing that would emotionally divide the player, where they don't want to tell Daniel it's his fault, but also don't want to lie to him. The second, slightly more happy theory, is that since Chris is a lonely boy, and since Daniel and Sean can't really take care of the dog, they'll give little Mushroom over to Chris, entrusting him to take care of her. It would be a nice send-off for her character and would guarantee her a safe and happy home. Maybe Chris and Mushroom go to live with the Reynolds after everything and they'll live happily ever after? But we also have to remember that this is Life is Strange, and while I think giving Mushroom to Chris is a likely event, I can't see the entire interaction being clean cut and like a fairy tale ending for Chris. I think there'll be more complexity to it than that, but I can't specify how I think it'll be worse. Either way, if Mushroom doesn't live happily, at the very least, I will write a very angry review of this game on Steam. Maybe won't go ahead with Murder and Don't Nod staff, but they can expect a fucking strongly worded letter. Number 4. Brett we're given surprisingly little information about Brett, the aggressive neighbour of the Diaz brothers, both before and after they run from Seattle, and yet he seemed like quite a significant character, right? The person who actually sparks the entire plot of the game, the one who causes Sean and Daniel to have to run away. Brett is reported to be in the hospital, unconscious and recovering from the incident later in episode 1. We know that his back hit a sharp rock as he fell, and judging by the way he seized up, he may even be paralysed by the time we hear more about him in later episodes. If Brett is paralysed, this has serious negative consequences for Sean since he will face heavy assault charges for it. However, Brett may not even be able to talk or make communication at all, stopping him from testifying against Sean. If things are very extreme and Brett is dead, Sean will be charged with manslaughter, although I doubt that this will happen. In terms of the Diaz's confrontation with Brett, it's important to know that the choice to either confront him or question Daniel does not cause a wolf icon to show, which tells us that this action actually does not have differing consequences depending on what you choose. In both instances, Brett can clearly be seen harassing Daniel and instigating conflict, and Sean can be seen rising up to it and attacking Brett back. This type of thing doesn't exactly boil down to a he started it situation, yet in this case the fact that Brett made comments such as go back to your own country and no wonder your mom bailed on you is probably a hint that Sean's side of the argument may be looked at more too. Brett's blatant, offensive, racist nature can't be ignored at all here, and it's very significant to the argument. When asked about what triggered Sean to hit Brett, he could easily bring up the racism and the case would gain a lot of complexity, but balance more to Sean's side, that is, if he's ever caught. Otherwise, we're not sure what will happen with Brett, but we can expect to see some of him in the news in episode 2 since the boys, staying with their grandparents, will likely have access to the TV. Number 5. Lila Part 2 this is just going to be a short section, but I neglected to mention in my previous video that Sean actually noted down Lila's number in his sketchbook before throwing his phone off the motel balcony. And with Brody's advice to buy a new phone, I think that at some point Sean will gain the opportunity to buy and use a burner phone, maybe call Lila at the Reynolds house in episode 2, so we'll likely see more communication with her in episode 2 via the phone, I just felt like I missed that out a bit in my previous video. As sort of a conclusion and general point, I'd like to add that I think the standards of living for Sean and Daniel will increase a lot in future episodes, because they seem to be learning more about being on the road, they are able to earn more money as they go. Episode 2 already suggests that they're staying with Mrs Reynolds, and after this I'm sure their grandparents would give them some money to get them started on the road to Mexico. But those are just my thoughts and theories on episode 1 for now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'd love for some discussion to take place about what you think will happen to the Diaz brothers next. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching, remember to keep your cucumbers serrated, and have a nice day. Catch you later guys! Captain Spirit.